Hi, I'm Martin Blackburn. I'm uh, KPMG's UK People Director. Um, I started life actually as an accountant myself, as an auditor, working for one of our competitors, EY, and moved into um, HR. And I've been in the HR field for the last 20 years. Engagement and trust are probably two of the hottest topics that are within the HR profession at the moment. And so the first question to ask ourselves, I think, is why? Why is that there? We know that there is a population coming through in our workforce now or already there that feel a mistrust with organisations, with large organisations, with big business, born out of financial crisis that we've, hap that we've seen happening and things like that. So trust is kind of seen as the holy grail and leading some people to question, well, actually, is it ever achievable and are we aspiring for something that we're never really going to be able to get? Particularly when we think about millennials coming into the organisation, um, often they have a career horizon that's much shorter than their predecessors. They're looking for, on average, two, three years of experience. They're looking for skills that they can then take out into the market. They're looking for themselves to be made, made more marketable. Maybe they don't want to trust. Maybe they're not actually that interested in trusting those organisations. And you've got organisations being led by older, in the main, older people who've gone through a, a different generation who just want these people to trust them. And maybe it's not going to happen. That's where the that's where I think there's quite a dichotomy at the moment. But you can't just leave it like that because if you haven't got a certain level of trust, you won't have a certain level of engagement. And as we know, engagement drives discretionary effort. So engagement is tends to be where I'm very much focused around how we drive engagement up. It's a bit of a challenge because, well, it's always a challenge, but it's a bit of a challenge because at this point in time, we've got probably about five different generations um, within our workforce. And we, we, we see with people working longer and with lifestyles changing quickly and technology changing quickly, that's only going to increase. And the way that you engage a millennial or post-millennial is frankly very different to the way that you engage a baby boomer. The way they expect to be communicated with is different. The way that they would have used social media in growing up, either not at all or using it to a great extent, is very different. Um, and you see that. You, you see that within our own organisation. The great thing I see um, with some of the millennials coming through is they have a voice and they want to be heard. And they, um, when they're a consumer, their voice, when they put something on Twitter, is as important as a CEO. And then you come into an organisation like this and they naturally expect it to be the same. And why shouldn't it be? Absolutely right. So organisations that are doing great stuff around engagement are really thinking around how do you harness all of that? And how do you ensure that it's not one size fits all and that you're um, cognizant of the fact that you have these different groups within your organisation who nowadays are expecting to be engaged with in a very different way? For me, if, and this is my theory, I'm just using basic theory around in engagement, but a lot of the research suggests there's probably four broad areas that you need to focus on, and that's what we're focused on within KPMG. So the first is a compelling strategic narrative. There has to be a reason why people want to work for you, your organisation, and they have to feel that there's a sense of comparability to what they're trying to achieve in their life and their values and those of the organization. And that's only ever increasing. So what an organization stands for, not just in terms of its financial purpose or strategic vision, but its social purpose as well, there has to be some alignment between the individuals who work for the firm and what that organization is doing in reality, not just what it puts out there and says it's doing. And people very quickly find if there's a disconnect between the two. So that's really fundamental. Um, the second is inspiring leaders, because if you haven't got leaders within your business who inspire your people um, with that compelling strategic narrative, then you've got a bit of an issue. Um, then uh, inspiring leaders are great. Of course, we all want to work for inspiring leaders, but we don't tend to work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So what is, the, what is the experience like of the people you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis? And that's where we talk about engaging managers. So managers who are working with you, your line managers, those who are working with you on an engagement, those who are evaluating your performance, you've got to ha they've got to be engaging. And then last but certainly not least is a colleague voice. So you can have all of that, but you've absolutely got to make sure that you're listening to your people and that they have a way of communicating and that we're communicating with them in an adult, adult way. Um, in particular, particularly given what we've described in terms of the cynicism that exists around communications from politicians or, or corporate communications, 
we've got a group of people in the organization who have been brought up to sniff out any kind of sense that that isn't true or fair or realistic. So communications need to be running through this and, and really adult, adult, telling it as it is, but also encouraging genuine two-way communication and not communicating in one way. For the reasons I've described, you cannot ex we cannot expect that everyone will listen to and expect and receive and engage with communications in the same way. Some people want that written, some people want it video, some people want it face to face, and people expect to interact back in different ways as well. So we in KPMG have our own version of um, LinkedIn or Facebook, which is called The Hub. You'll have discussion groups going on there. Some people will interact in that way. Some people won't want to. They'll want to have face-to-face -face meetings to discuss things. Some people want to send an email. Some people want to phone. As a, to, to get the most in terms of engagement, as an organization, you need to embrace all of that. There's a number of ways of measuring engagement, and actually this is an area where the marketplace is changing. The very traditional way to measure engagement, and we still do this at KPMG, is through your annual people survey. And that gives you a like-for-like -like comparison in terms of how engagement is across the firm and in different areas of the firm and different business units. And what organizations are increasingly moving to is wanting to get a pulse check, and not necessarily around all the questions that you put in a, in a people survey, but a quick pulse check of how things are going um, using apps and we're seeing that similarly here. So we might put out communication from our leadership. We can very quickly get a sense of how has that gone down and do people, uh, have they read it, taken notice of it, are they interested in it, have they engaged with that um, through a very simple app questionnaire that we, we employ. Um, we also can measure engagement through, uh, but people are leaving us. And why are they saying that, that they are leaving? And what sits beneath that? So really careful um, analysis of exit data it is really important and making the most of that. A lot of organizations, in my experience, run an exit interview process, but aren't necessarily as focused as they might be in terms of, that's a wealth of data there. What is it telling us about the business? What are the trends they're saying? If you put that data together with your people survey to data, together with any instantaneous feedback you're getting, you're building up a pretty compelling picture around how engaged your people are. Um, colleague voice comes through a, no a number of ways. So, for example, we have our networks, um, and that's a great way where you can meet like-minded people and feel that you've got a collective voice. We have something called our employee business forum, where people are elected onto that and represent the views of their colleagues. Um, and we engage with those around, with that group around leadership decisions we're making, issues the organization might be facing, but they also raise issues to us as well. Um, we have our own version of Facebook here at KPMG, which is called The Hub, and we um, people are encouraged to on there um, raise issues raise issues, questions, debates, start debates going. It's quite an active forum, so that's, that's very popular, and we can set up a hub page to have a specific discussion and topic going on if that's, if that's something that's useful. And that's quite actively used. Um, but equally, people with, uh, within KPMG, in common with other organizations, very flat organization, we encourage people to speak to, speak to their colleagues across the firm. It doesn't matter what role they play.